Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Unlike the beloved disciple, I can't remember at what hour Mary came into our home because I wasn't born to this world when she came. I was told that the icon of Mary known as our mother perpetual help was given to my parents as a wedding gift in 1943 by my mother's older brother, my uncle, Father Lawrence Lynch, who at the time was an army chaplain for the Fighting 69th, the Irish Regiment, just before he went off to war. My mother was encouraged to give Mary a place of honor and introduce her to the family. Make her known and loved was the card that my uncle wrote before he went to war. Unfortunately, my uncle never saw how my mother carried out his wishes. On the night of April 25th, 1945, on the island of Okinawa, he was killed instantly by an exploding mortar while giving communion to a dying soldier from Brooklyn, New York. He was 38 years old. Now a framed picture of Father Lawrence Lynch dressed in his army uniform occupied the piano in our house. Like the picture of Father Lawrence on the piano dressed in his army uniform, the icon of our mother perpetual help remained in our home and never left. You couldn't help but notice her compassionate eyes with that touch of sadness that seemed to know who you were and to whom you belonged. Over 2,000 years ago, when the Holy Spirit touched the womb of Mary, a prediction arose from her lips. All generations will call me blessed. She was more right than she might have imagined at that moment. Mary of Nazareth, the mother of Jesus Christ, is today the most celebrated and venerated woman in history. And in the last 25, 30 years, there has been an increasingly renewed devotion to the mother of God. Last year alone, five million pilgrims journeyed to Lourdes in France and 10 million went to Guadalupe in Mexico. In this tawdry culture of ours, Mary is utter beauty. In this modern spiritual wasteland, Mary is a spring of fresh water. In this flattened landscape that tries to shut out all vestiges of heaven, Mary is the gate of heaven that opens us to God. And now for the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say. In 1964, when I was 13 years old, our family moved to Annapolis, Maryland. Well, eight months later, in March of 1965, a young redemptress priest in his 30s, Father Robert Lennon, came into my CCD class one Sunday morning. And he spoke to all the young men about the priesthood. And he talked to us about this high school seminary that the redemptress had and then he asked if any of the boys in the classroom had ever thought or were thinking about being a priest. Now, I don't know and I don't remember if any of the other boys raised their hands, but I didn't. I didn't. I wanted to, but I didn't feel worthy. But at the end of the class, as Father Lennon was walking down the hall, there was this quiet urging in me to walk down the hall and say something to him. So I actually ran down the hall and told him, I think I'd like to be a priest, but I'm not sure I'll make it. So we talked a little, and he promised that he would come and visit my family. Two weeks after speaking with Father Lennon, he and another redemptorist, Father Michael Dillon, came to my house to meet my family and to speak to my parents. And as they sat in the living room, my mother began to cry. At first I thought she was crying because I was possibly going to leave home. 
But then she got up from the couch and she disappeared. And when she came back, she was carrying the picture of my uncle, the one on the piano, dressed in the army uniform. And then she introduced him to these priests and she said, this is my brother. Do you know him? He was killed in Okinawa in 1945. His name was Father Lawrence Lynch. He too was a redemptorist priest. They knew him well. They were seminarians at the Theologet when they brought his body back from Okinawa and buried it there. They were amazed by the connection. It would only be years later when I was giving a nine-day novena to our mother of perpetual help to the redemptristine nuns in Asophis that one afternoon when I was reflecting before her image that suddenly, suddenly I looked back and recognized the mysterious unfolding of grace. And I stand before you tonight as a witness to this truth. I came to the altar of God because of my uncle, Father Lawrence Lynch, who gave the image of our mother perpetual help as a wedding gift. Behold your mother. She's a presence in my life wherever I go. She's always my perpetual help. She's an image at the foot of my bed and she's the last person to see me go to sleep at night. And sometimes when I arise, she's the first person I see. She's a medal around my neck. Now this isn't a rabbit foot for good luck, but it's for assurance. I touch it for assurance and for comfort, just to be always aware of her presence. I carry her in my wallet and give her away to people who I know need help. She is always with me. Behold your mother. Take her home tonight. Welcome her once more into your hearts.